What is up everyone, welcome back to another top 10 video where this time we're going to be counting down the best plays from the third week of competition in stage 4. As we reach the halfway point of this final stage, winning and losing streaks alike continue to grow. Having one of their most successful weeks to date, the LA Valiant won the 4th battle for LA and then went on to become only the 4th team in the league to hand NYXL a loss. On the other hand though, we see the Boston Uprising continue their downward spiral. After a flawless stage 3, the 4th best team in the season standings now holds a 6 series loss streak, equal to their total number of map wins this stage. With Philadelphia, Seoul and the LA Gladiators all just a single series behind in the season playoff race, the next few matches for the Uprising will prove instrumental if they want to remain in the top 6. With only 2 more weeks left in the regular season and playoff storylines continuing to brew, let's take the time now to look back at the best moments from the past week of competition as we jump right into things with a play in our 10th spot. Kicking things off this week we have Pine coming out with an extremely unorthodox flank. Rarely seen on Watchpoint Gibraltar, there is a little known flanking route behind the final checkpoint. In rare instances you may see a tracer triple blink to get around and catch the enemy team by surprise. In all my time playing and spectating Overwatch though, I can say that I've never seen a Widowmaker pull off this flank before. Now whilst Pine's lethality here certainly wasn't up to snuff with his usual highlight worthy moments, just his presence alone in such an unexpected position is worthy of praise. He catches the Valiant by surprise and essentially allows the rest of NYXL to push forward in the process. He does eventually land the flickshot onto Soon as well, making this one of the more unique Widowmaker highlights in quite some time. <laughs> It's a problem! Coming in at number 9 we have Baby Bay stepping up big time as the San Francisco Shock became only the second team to take down a revitalized Dallas Fuel here in stage 4. Emerging from the spawn room on the Hanzo, a hero we don't typically see Baby Bay switch over to, he wastes very little time getting into position and picking apart the opposing composition. He opens with this ridiculous headshot onto Taimu that certainly doesn't even seem possible from that angle. After forcing out the Resurrect from Harry Hook, Baby Bay then goes on to take down the Mercy mid-flight from yet again an awkward angle. He fires a few arrows into Mickey and scatters the Baby Diva for good measure. That opening pick really caught Dallas off guard, as Baby Bay entirely opened up the point for the rest of his team and ensured that point A was taken at a blistering pace. In at number 8 this week we have a brief moment of greatness from the Shanghai Dragons as Ardo took matters into his own hands. With time dwindling away and a series already lost, Ardo flanks behind the Seoul Dynasty with a pulse bomb at the ready. He notices Gambler pocketing Jaehong, throws the pulse bomb out, connects and finds both supports with a single ultimate. Definitely an excellent trade but the play isn't over just yet as he recalls to instantly burst down Fleta as well. A really great triple kill nearly in overtime as Otto steps up to the plate and allows his team to at least capture the second checkpoint on Dorado. Otto knows these guys are there, perfect stick. Oh, we got oh, Poon, Gambler! Nice. Jayhawk's not gonna save you there, he's trying to get away from you! You got cooties, fam! Coming in at number 7, we stay on Dorado but jump to the series between Philly and New York. Again, in a similar situation to the previous highlight with the outcome of the series already determined, Philly continues to press forward. Now typically most Widowmakers find difficulty when situated in a duel with Pine, Kape though relishes in these moments as we see him grapple up and take down Pine upon landing to start things out. A crucial pick in and of its own right, but noticing that Animo is swooping in for the res, Kape bides his time and once again finds the headshot onto Pine to entirely seal the deal. An extremely efficient play from Kape is he entirely negates the res and takes down the most explosive member of NYXL for the time being. With him on that oh! play, he gets shot again, Carpe. In at number 6 this week we have an engagement that was all too confusing in the heat of the moment but actually proved quite miraculous when slowed down. Watching in real time we can see Manhattan send forth his Graviton Surge to find 4 members of the Soul Dynasty. Without a moment's hesitation, we also see Logix activate his Meteor Strike and attempt to follow up. Obviously the play didn't quite pan out, but where exactly did that damage go? Well looking from a closer perspective and the replay shortly after, we can just make things out. Firstly, both Wekid and Kuki are able to turn around in time to absorb the damage with their own shields. Zunba activates his own bubble to survive the ultimate whilst Jaehong simply activates his transcendence. Tough to make out in the moment, but what we actually saw was some exceptional timing and coordination on the side of Seoul Dynasty as they negate one of the most powerful ult combinations in the game and leave Florida empty handed. 
coming in at number 5 we have one of my favourite moments of the entire stage as it perfectly captures the undying mentality of the Dallas Fuel roster. In a winning effort against one of the top teams in the league in the London Spitfire, Dallas proved that their reform structure is a force to be reckoned with and certainly put themselves in close contention for the stage playoffs if they can carry the momentum into the next two weeks. The best highlight from the series came from early on as Dallas went head to head with London on Blizzard World. Having successfully held London to the very first point until overtime, an extremely difficult accomplishment, London used up the rest of their ultimates in hope of acquiring that final tick. Birdring activates his Dragon Blade and immediately sets his sights on Unko. Unbeknownst to him, Unko was armoured up from Mickey's rally just moments prior and was also being pocketed by Harry Hook. Before Birdring can even consider retreat, Unko lands the necessary orbs and shuts him down for good. An extraordinary play as Unko and Dallas Fuel as a whole just refuse to be held down. Stage 4 has been monumental for the roster as a whole and you have to assume this play in particular gave them a great deal of confidence as they closed out the rest of the series. In at number 4, fittingly enough, we have a noteworthy moment from the 4th and final battle of LA this regular season. Despite Valiant taking the series in one of the most impressive weeks yet, it goes without saying that the Gladiators put up an exceptional fight and we see that demonstrated throughout the play in focus as Hydration goes on a tear. Opening with a quick kill onto Kareev, Hydration blasts himself into the objective to barrage soon, fate, and even land some damage onto space. A remarkable play on its own, but when observing from a different perspective, we can see that Hydration most certainly would have died if it hadn't been for a really well-timed bubble from Void. A really great turnaround as the Gladiators regain control of the point here on Oasis. In our third spot this week we have an absolutely genius play from Zumba and Wekid of the Soul Dynasty. Now typically, self-destructs can be seen as nothing more than simple zoning ults, explosives intended to clear out an area and in this case, force the opposition off of the objective. As Shanghai are forced away from the lethal explosion, Wekid just acquires his ultimate outside of the point and unleashes a massive barrage onto four members of the Shanghai squad. A sensational play as the setup from Zumba allows Weki to obliterate four enemies and close out the first phase of Lijiang Tower in style. In our second spot this week we have another extraordinary play from Pine of the New York Excelsior and I mean, at this point we all just know what to expect. With the series tied up one apiece against the LA Valiant, Pine opens the third map with a typical flank wherein, it goes without saying, that he single handedly wins the teamfight. <laughs> he first takes down Soon and forces the res from Custer. He misses one but quickly makes up for it by taking down Soon once again before landing the headshot onto Custer and eventually taking down Agilities as well. Oh, oh, pine time already? I expected a little bit more before it was Pine time, but we're just gonna start right out with it today. A completely unexpected flank proves efficient once again for Pine who in all likelihood is one of the only Widowmakers you can count on to flank all the way around the objective by himself and still somehow walk away with his name plastered in the kill feed. Insane play from him as usual. But coming in at number 1 this week, the top spot simply had to go to space of the LA Valiant as he helps his team put an end to the insane 14 match winning streak of the NYXL. Certainly arguments can be made acknowledging the fact that NYXL have most likely taken their foot off the gas of late in order to conserve themselves for the stage and season playoffs, and it makes all the sense in the world. Why burn your players out now when wins and losses quite literally mean nothing? As referenced in previous weeks, NYXL has already clinched the number one seed and have nothing to gain from going all out in the final few weeks of regular competition. That being said, even with that knowledge in mind, no team had yet put a stop to the New York roster until LA Valiant, so you can't deny the incredible effort from the hometown team this week. Atop the highlights from an incredible series is this extremely aggressive diva bomb from space that takes both supports out of the equation for NYXL in one of the final engagements of the match. As mentioned prior, diva bombs are typically used as zoning ultimates and occasionally find a kill or two here and there, even at the highest level of competition. Another tactic is to reserve your ultimate until a teamfight comes around and you find your HP in decline. Using the ult at the last second provides you with a fresh mech at no real cost. Very rarely do we see a diva main waste that potential self heal by just launching their ultimate into a room before a teamfight even starts, but that's exactly what Space did to catch NYXL off guard. No one could have anticipated the timing and positioning of the self-destruct, hence why it finds both Anima and Jurnak. Certainly a bold play, but one that paid off in the end, as LA handily won the remaining teamfights and closed out the series with another win to their name. As it now stands, the Valiant are the only remaining team without a loss to their name in Stage 4, and this win also propelled them to second place in the overall standings. 
So that does it for another week of great highlights, only two weeks remain before we reach the very first Overwatch League playoffs. Which teams do you think we'll see stick it out to the very end? Who do you think we'll see make the final stage playoffs of 2018? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, but as always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.